back with another video and before I get started with this review here I want to say thanks for stopping by and if this is your first time here if you haven't done so already make sure you do the right thing and hit the subscribe button below and if you enjoyed the video then give your girl a thumbs up all right so let's get it so today's video I'm gonna break it down into two parts so for the first part I'm gonna do my standard shoe review which I always do but for the second part, I decided to do an unboxing of tons of things I got in the mail for the past couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. But let's get started here. This is your standard GS box from Jordans. Nothing too wild or crazy. Um, I almost always get this box when I buy by Jordans, right? Unless it's a Jordan 1 where I get the two-piece box that has the Nike Air with the sushi on the top lid. Or the 4s that has the, you know, flight on the top lid with the Jumpman. So the last time I got that was for the Fire Red 4s. So for this box here, this is a matte black box with the Jumpman on the top lid that's debossed in a gold foil. And this is a size 4, which is my size. So let's take a look inside. in the Carmine colorway and a lot of people have been waiting for this colorway to retro for a very long time and the reason for that is this back here so this Nike Air with the swoosh that's embroidered on the back heel is a very big deal to a lot of us because it's super OG so the first time we saw this shoe was in 1991 but for the two times that it retroed afterwards which was in 2008 with the CDP pack or in 2014 it did not have this back here it just had the Jumpman with the air text that's inverted on. So 30 years later, it is back and it looks so good. And so for those with trypophobia, you may not like this shoe and you may not like my B-roll, so just don't look too hard. But I like these shoes a lot and as you can tell, I have a few here. So I'm going to use it as a reference. So I have the black infrareds here from 2019 and then the white varsity from 2010, I believe. So these shoes are super dope, so let's go to some details. in that carmine color which is like a deep red and beneath the perforations on the quarter panel of the nubuck piece on both the lateral and the medial side is made out of 3m so it reflects when the light hits it and for the layer above it it's a bright white leather and there's perforations throughout the lateral as well as the medial for the ankle area on both the lateral and the medial it kind of protrudes out a little bit so it's kind of like a bubble Going back to the heel of the shoe, at the top part of the ankle, there's a pull tab, but it kind of looks like a spoiler, right? So it's in black with a red arch. And as I mentioned previously, there's a Nike Air with a swoosh that's inverted on in that carmine color. These shoes come with flat white laces, and to hold it down, there is a red lace lock with a Jumpman on one side and the Nike text on the opposite. For the middle area of the tongue, you see this red shroud with the Jumpman logo embroidered on in black. And right below it, there's a tongue that's made out of neoprene in white and black. And for the top part of the tongue, it's rubberized and there's two cutouts and it says Air Jordan that's embossed. the soft liner as well as the insole are both in black and the Nike Air with the swoosh is imprinted on the insole in white. So let's take a look at the right shoe. Polyurethane foam midsole, we see some white and black, 
and also some of that translucent also just creeping up on the heel as well as the forefront of the shoe. At the heel of the midsole, you see that window cut out on both the lateral and the medial side to see the air bubble unit. And this is the last time that we see the air bubble unit exposed on some Jordans until the 16th. For the outsole of the shoe, this is a white and icy outsole and the icy pieces are translucent and there's a Jumpman that's embossed in red. So this is where your triple phobia might get triggered, so just don't look too hard. So I personally do not like icy outsoles, it's just not for me. For example, on the black and fred, it's white, so I think it looks a lot better. So if they had just incorporated this type of outsole for the Carmines, I think it would have just looked a lot better. And then for the white varsities, these are super yellow, they're like 11 years old, but I think they still look really good aged. So if these outsoles for the black and friends come out to look like this in 10 years or so, I would not be mad at all. I think it still looks really good. But I don't really know how icy outsoles will age, so we'll see how this goes in 10 years or so, right? Regarding quality of these shoes, they're not bad. I think the Nuba feels fine. I know that it's gonna crease just like how my black infrareds crease kind of funny, but that's just the nature of the shoes, right? And just the way that they're shaped. And then the leather feels pretty decent. It's not too bad. But I think quality control is where I take issue with and that's nothing new. For example, on the medial side for the midsole, it looks like it's just rubbing off already and it looks like the coating of the paint is really thin. So that could use a second layer. For the toe area on the right shoe, it's a little dirty and I don't know why it's dirty. These are fresh out the box. And then for the nubuck area, there's some glue exposures, but there's nothing new, right? I talked about it in my University Ones. I talked about it in my Cool Grade Threes. I talked about it in my Hirachi Desert Oaks. It just happens, it's natural. So I'm not tripping too hard about that. But one thing I'm super bummed out about is the execution of this embroidery work back here. So the Nike Air with the swoosh, as great as it is to have back here, it doesn't look like the quality is that great. It kind of reminds me of the CO.JP Midnight Navy pair that I have on the tongue where it's embroidered. It just looks like a really bad job, right? Compared to the black inference right here. So if you can see that, the stitching just looks really good and really detailed. It could be that the stitching on Nubuck is a lot easier than stitching on leather. But let me know in the comments what you think about the shoes. Do you care that the Nike Air with the swoosh came back? Or did you not mind the Jumpman with the Air Techs instead? make sure you go to the size. You can also go half a size up because this toe area might be a little too snug if you're not comfortable with that, right? So hang tight because I'm going to show you all what they look like on feet as well as do a bunch of unboxings. size mail call in the past week or 10 days or so so I decided to do an unboxing or unbagging of them during this week's episode so let's crack them open so I'll start with the bags first this is from Rakuten they were formerly known as Ebates um, the official sponsors of the Golden State Warriors so let's take a look this is super dope this is the free hoodie that came along with any purchase of the Oakland Forever gear through the Warrior Shop as long as you had your Rakuten activated and so it's really cool because this is in collaboration with Oaklandish, which is a woman-owned, Asian-owned business in Oakland. So you may have seen this tree logo, it's their logo, but it's also an Oakland tree, right? And then it has a lightning bolt through it, which pays homage to the Warriors jersey, um, 1997 to 2002, I believe. So that was their jersey and it had a lightning bolt through it, so pretty cool. And then on the back of the hoodie, it says Oakland Forever with the lightning bolt through the diamond as well as the Oaklandish tree at the top and the year 07 at the bottom. And so since this is the Oakland Forever type of gear, it has a few different things on it. Obviously, it's a collaboration with Oaklandish. And then the lightning bolt is supposed to represent the Thunder Era Warriors, right? So that's 97 to 2002. And so we had the Thunder mascot as well as the lightning bolt on their jerseys. 
And then the 07 is the We Believe era, which is, you know, with Jason Richardson, Baron Davis, Al Harrington, I don't know, Monta, all of them. Um, so that was when the Warriors beat the Mavs, eighth seed to first seed in the playoffs. So that was super crazy. Um, and I'm class of 2007, so I like it a lot. So this is a really cool hoodie and it's free too. So I got this free t-shirt from Warren Lottas and it was through their scratchers drop. And it happened because of the big lawsuit that Nike hit them with. And so it was a collaboration sneaker with Jeff Staple. And so that didn't go through, but um, I had placed an order, so I canceled it. But I was still given the opportunity to pick a shirt. So I picked this one. It says time is precious at the bottom. If we ever go broke, girl, then time is all we got. And you can't make that back. This is the Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG in the University Blue colorway. And these are super cute. This is a size 8C, which is a toddler size. So obviously it wouldn't come with all the cool features that a GS size or a men's size would have, right? So no extra set of laces, so no university blue laces, so just the flat black laces. And it doesn't say the word air right below the swoosh on the tongue tab. There's no imprint on the insole as well, but there is still the Wings logo on the lateral collar. And then the Also silhouette is your classic Jordan Ones Also silhouette, so the best in the game, just like a mini version, right? But these are super cute. I'm glad to add it to my mini me collection. Um, I feel like I wouldn't mind matching with my child, right? But I would never match with like my partner. And so I'm not going to go into a review about them because I already did it with my GS size. So make sure you watch that video, but I'm just gonna continue on with all the rest of the unboxings. So obviously this is from Nike because it has a just do it tape on the top. So let's take a look inside. And I have another pair of Carmines. Um, so I doubled up on these. Obviously, you just saw my review on the first pair, so I'm not gonna go into another review, right? Um, but real quick, the quality of this one's okay. There's a little bit of glue exposure on the new book, but I think overall it still looks pretty decent. I'll probably keep these on ice. Maybe I'll do a video on how to shrink wrap shoes, right? So let me know in the comments if you think that would be helpful or not. Um, but I'm just gonna continue on with the unboxing or my last unboxing here. This is the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the ash blue colorway. And these are super nice in hand. I think the colorway is really pretty. And usually I like more the neutral tones from my 350 V2. It's not necessarily something really bright or loud. But I think this one looks really good. So I hit on these through a raffle from Atmos. So shout out to Atmos for these shoes. And so I like the prime knit upper that's above the lateral stripe a lot. It's more of a monochromatic look. So various shades of grays against all the blues that's on the shoe. So I think it looks really good. And it looks like someone took just a white paint brush and just gave it a stroke against the prime knit upper to give it that ash effect. So I thought that was really cool. And then one thing to note is that for the lateral stripe, usually 350 V2s that we've seen as of late had a monofilament material for it. But this one kind of looks and feels like it's a woven nylon instead. So I thought that was really interesting. And it's not translucent like how the other ones were, right? But I'm not going to go into a full review about them because I have the ash pearls to review with these. So make sure you stay tuned for that video, but thanks for tuning in and until next time.